So to get started, what I'd like you to do is come over to your HTML editor. And in my case, I'm going to be using Adobe's Dreamweaver. So I'll just come over and switch to that. Now I've already defined a site called PSD to HTML that uses the blank directory within the resource files that you can download from our site. And inside that directory, we have index.html, which I'd like you to open. And once you open it, you'll notice we have a basic HTML document in place. It has a title of monoplate. And you'll notice that we have some links to some style sheet files. Let's not worry about the IE8 and the IE7 style sheet files. We'll worry about those once we start testing these pages in Internet Explorer. But you will notice we do link to style.css. And if we go into the includes directory, inside the includes directory we have a CSS folder. And in there you'll find style.css. Go ahead and double click it to open it. And you'll see all this code. And this code is essentially that master reset that I was telling you about in the previous movie. This ensures that everything will essentially be zeroed out giving us the ability to control all of our content. Additionally, there are some class definitions in here that we'll take a look at a little bit later on that give us the ability to position content a little bit easier than what we would if we didn't have this framework to work with. There is a lot of code here, and you'll notice it's not structured in a way that's all that legible. So we're not going to go through this line by line and look at it. In fact, what I want you to do in your editor, if your editor has this ability, is to select all of that code and then come over and collapse it. By collapsing it, it's out of the way. You don't have to look at it anymore, leaving you essentially a blank slate to start writing your code. So we need to come up with some different styles that give us the ability to define certain regions of the HTML document. If we come back to index.html, you'll notice that we already have one div tag, and it has an ID of wrapper, or I should say wrap, actually. What we want to do is place all of our other content within this wrap div tag. So if we come back to Photoshop, inside of Photoshop, we kind of need to get a measurement here. There's a couple different ways that we can do this. The first thing I'm going to do is double click the hand tool. By doing that, the entire layout will fit within the workable space that's available for the document. The next thing that I want to do is display the rulers. So if you go to the View menu, under the View menu, you can choose rulers. Now here, it looks like we're displaying this in inches, which really isn't all that helpful. So we want to come up to the Preferences dialog box. Under the Edit menu, you can choose Preferences. You would go under the Photoshop menu on the Macintosh and choose Preferences. And here, if we come over and take a look at all the different options, what we want to do is come over to Units in Rulers. And you'll notice right now our rulers are set to inches. Again, pixels will be a little bit more beneficial to us. So go ahead and select Pixels. Then you can go ahead and click OK. Once you do that, you can get a fairly accurate measurement if you take a look at the content. Now, it's somewhat confusing because we have a little bit of a margin over here on the left and on the right. So you could do this in one of two ways. You can open up the Info panel by going to the Window menu, and under the Window menu, you can choose Info. From there, you can choose the Marquee tool. With the Marquee tool, you can make a selection essentially around that area. And if you click and drag, you'll see what that selection is. And of course, I just clicked and dragged, but I'm set to a fixed size for my style. Control-D or Command-D will deselect that, and you want to switch this to Normal. And at that point, you'll be able to click and drag around the main content area. And you'll notice I'm getting a value here in this heads-up display of 1,010 pixels. But you'll notice it looks like I'm about 10 pixels off over there on the left-hand side. So if you let go of the mouse, you can also get a readout here inside the info panel. You'll notice the exposition of the marquee is set to a little over 1,000 pixels. Let's go ahead and deselect this Control-D or Command-D. That's one way to use that marquee tool. The other way is to change the zero point of the ruler system. And you can do that by clicking in the top left-hand corner of the rulers and dragging down here to the content area. Once you do that, you'll notice we can see where the 1,000 pixel marker is. And it looks like it's pretty much at the end of our content. So this gives us the ability to essentially measure 
the width of the design. And in this case, it's a thousand pixels. Now, of course, I know it's a thousand pixels, but what I wanted to do is at least give you some options in terms of how you could go about figuring that out on your own. So now that we know what the overall width is going to be, what we can do is start writing some CSS rules and we can start adding values to various properties to get this sized properly. And that's what we're going to do in the next movie.